In addition to metal fumes, vapors or fumes from coatings and residues can also have toxic effects and contribute to the composition of welding fumes. Polyurethane coatings can produce hydrogen cyanide, formaldehyde, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and isocyanate vapors. Formaldehyde is found in metal coatings with binders and pigments. It is also found in degreasing solvents. It is an irritant to the eyes and respiratory tract. Diisocyanates emits from metal with polyurethane paint. Isocyanates cause eye, nose, and throat irritation. There is also a high possibility of sensitization, resulting in asthmatic or other allergic symptoms, even at very low exposures. Epoxy coatings can produce carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. Vinyl paints can produce hydrogen chloride. Phosphate rust inhibiting paints can release phosphine during welding processes. Phosphine is an irritant to the eyes and respiratory system, and can damage the nervous system, cardiovascular system, gastrointestinal system, kidneys, and liver. Hydrogen fluoride forms from the decomposition of rod coatings. It is irritating to the eyes and respiratory tract. Overexposure can cause lung, kidney, bone, and liver damage. Hydrogen chloride and phosgene can be produced if chlorinated hydrocarbon degreasing solvents, such as trichloroethylene, are present, as they react with ultraviolet light from the welding arc. It is a severe irritant to eyes, nose, respiratory system, and digestive system. Symptoms may be delayed. Finally, welding gases that are produced throughout the welding process may also cause adverse health effects. Gases produced from the welding arc include Carbon monoxide from the breakdown of carbon dioxide shielding gas, in arc welding. Ozone from the interaction of the electric arc with atmospheric oxygen. Ozone is most notably formed during plasma arc, MIG, and TIG processes. Nitrogen oxides from the heating of atmospheric oxygen and nitrogen. Carbon monoxide is absorbed readily into the bloodstream, causing headaches, dizziness, or muscular weakness. High concentrations may result in unconsciousness and death. Ozone exposure can result in effects such as fluid in the lungs and hemorrhaging. Concentrations as low as one part per million can cause headaches and dryness of the eyes. Chronic effects include significant changes in lung function. Nitrogen results in eye, nose, and throat irritation in low concentrations. Abnormal fluid in the lung and other serious effects at higher concentrations. Chronic effects include lung problems such as emphysema. To ensure welder's safety and minimize exposure to welding fumes, several precautionary measures can be taken regardless of the industry they're working in. Here are some detailed tips and guidance to help reduce exposure to welding fumes. 1. Dealing with coatings. Listen up, welders. Coatings in your weld area can generate extra fumes, and we don't want that. Removing these coatings also amps up your weld quality. So, how can you do this? Grab a stripping product to peel off these coatings and make sure you clear away any residue before you start welding. Dealing with ultra-toxic coatings? In that case, wet slurry vacuum removal techniques are your friend. But remember, grinding those coatings isn't the answer. The dust it creates could be just as toxic. And hey, safety is key. So stick to the right safety procedures and gear up with the right personal protective equipment, PPE, when removing coatings. Look at your risk assessments, read those manufacturer's instructions, and consider potential exposures. 2. Dodging those pesky welding fumes and gases. Be sure to follow the instructions, safety data sheets, and hazard control measures laid out by the manufacturer. You'll lower the risks that come with those nasty welding fumes and gases. Have you considered swapping out materials? Water-based cleaners or high flash point solvents can help cut down on fume generation. Three. Ventilation and respiration, the dynamic duo. Let's not forget about ventilation. You need plenty of it in your workspace to keep you safe from oxygen displacement, dangerous substance buildup, and flammable atmospheres. Use local exhaust ventilation systems. Position them right next to the plume source so they can suck away fumes and gases before they reach your breathing zone. And of course, don't forget your respiratory protective equipment. Use it as part of your company's respiratory protection program. But keep in mind, your mask isn't a substitute for proper ventilation. It's vital to have local exhaust ventilation and facility-wide solutions working hand-in-hand -hand with your respiratory protective equipment. So there you have it, folks, safety first. Let's keep those welding spaces healthy and hazard-free.